God is good all the time. God is good all the time. We are just happy to be here. I'm happy to be here and preach the word of God to you. God is so good. In the morning and in the evening, in troubles, in the heat and the cool, God is always good. Worship the Lord. Because He is a God of miracles. He is a God who makes things happen. He created the universe. He created everything from just His Word. By just speaking the Word, by just opening His mouth, God created everything out of nothing. He is amazing. Hallelujah. Tú eres maravilloso, Dios. You're amazing, Father. Everlasting God. Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. Imagine. Imagine Moses. Imagine Moses coming into the presence of God. And Moses hears the word of God coming from the burning bush. And he says, Moses, Moses, come here, Moses. Imagínate Moisés escuchando la voz de Dios que viene de un, de un fuego ardiente que le dice Moisés Moisés ven aquí and Moses comes before God and the burning bush the presence of God tells Moses Moses take off your sandals off your feet for where you stand is holy ground le dice Dios a Moisés quítate las sandalias porque donde estás donde estás parado es tierra santa it is holy ground and Moses comes before God and he takes off his sandals and he listens to the instructions of God he listens to the word of God hallelujah Moses had a relationship with God Moisés tiene una relación con Dios. Una relación íntima con Dios. Moses had an intimate relationship with God. And that's what we need. We are called to have a relationship with God. An intimate and beautiful relationship with our Creator. God did not create us for God to be in heaven far off. And for us to be here in this earth and be without Him. But He has created us for relationship. He has created us for communication. And He has created us for revival. He has created us to be filled with the presence of God. Dios nos ha criado para ser llenos del Espíritu Santo. Para avivamiento, para conocer a Dios en una manera íntima. Para que hables con Dios uno a uno y reconozcas que es tu creador. Aleluya. Open your Bibles. Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 23. Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 23. Hallelujah, you are good. And it says, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. But you have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you, and con and so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, "My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest." Then Moses said to him, "If your presence..." does not go with us. Do not send us up from here. 
how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. Hallelujah. Listen. Moses said, Show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cliff in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Y dice así poquito en español, dice, Moisés le dijo al Señor, tú insistes en que yo debo de guiar a este pueblo, pero no me has dicho a quién enviarás conmigo. También me has dicho que soy tu amigo y que cuento con tu favor. Pues si realmente es así, Dime qué quieres que haga. Así sabré que en verdad cuento con tu favor. Ten presente que los israelitas son tu pueblo. Yo mismo iré contigo y te daré descanso, respondió el Señor. ¿O vas con todos nosotros, replicó Moisés? ¿O mejor no me hagas salir de aquí? Si no vienes con nosotros, ¿Cómo vamos a saber, tu pueblo y yo, que contamos con tu favor? En que salemos, en que seremos diferentes de los demás pueblos de la tierra. Está bien, haré lo que me pides, le dijo el Señor a Moisés. Pues cuentas con mi favor y te concederé yo, mi amigo. Aleluya. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, because you are, you are an awesome God, Lord. Father, I pray, Father, in this day, Lord, that you may prepare the hearts and minds of the congregation. Lord, I pray, Father, that you touch their hearts and you touch our minds, Lord. I pray that we may have an intimate relationship with you. I pray that we may learn, Lord, to love you, to worship you for who you are, Lord, if there are any that are here that are sick, we pray that you heal them in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray that they may listen to your word. We pray that we may have revival, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that your thoughts be my thoughts and your words be my words. Put your words in my mouth, Lord, that I may preach the power of the Holy Spirit that the church, Lord, that you are a congregation whom you have assembled together may be transformed by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. A revival is coming. A revival is coming as you have never seen before. Viene un avivamiento como tú nunca has visto. A revival in which the whole church the whole church in the world will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they will start, the unbelievers will start to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Y los que no creen miran milagros, señales y prodigios. Que el Espíritu Santo se va a mover en una, en una manera hermosa. The Holy Spirit will move in a wondrous way. God will revive the church. God will give us his glory and show us his favor because God loves you 
And God's favor is with you. El favor de Dios está contigo. You are his friend. It is one meal. A great revival happened once. On April 9th, 1906, there was a man named William Seymour. April 9th, 1906, there was a man named William Seymour. This man believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He believed that the evidence in speaking in tongues and the evidence of being baptized in the Spirit was speaking in tongues. And this man preached in Texas. And many people believed. But the problem with William Seymour was that he did not speak in tongues yet. He was not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. Now there was a woman from Los Angeles who believed in what he was saying. So then he he, he called William Seymour and said, you know what? I want to invite you to my church in Los Angeles and I want you to preach on the baptism of the Spirit. And Seymour said, yes, I'll be there. So he came to the church in Los Angeles. He came to the church in Los Angeles and he started preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And many people did not believe Mucha gente no creía en el bautismo del Espíritu Santo. No creía lo que William Seymour estaba diciendo era verdad. He didn't believe that what he was saying was truth. The following Sunday, when William Seymour came back to the church, they closed the doors on him. They locked the doors and they would not let him in. And he asked, are you kicking me out because of my preaching? Because of what the Bible says? the book of Acts and he said yes we don't believe no creemos en lo, en lo que tú estás diciendo le cerraron las puertas y no podían entrar él no podía entrar porque no creía en la predicación que él estaba predicando so then there were half the church was divided and some of the believers believed that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit so they congregated in one, of the, in one of the members house they congregated and they started praying and William Seymour started to preach as they preached as he preached and as they fasted as they prayed the owner of the house was filled with the Holy Spirit and he started to speak in tongues el que era dueño de la casa empezó a hablar en lenguas en una lengua espiritual so that there caused the revival there was a revival that started to happen. After that, William Seymour started praying. For 24 hours, he started praying. And he would not stand from his knees, but he was on his knees praying for the baptism of the Spirit. Finally, when the night was over, William Seymour started speaking in tongues. And then the one who was meant to be his wife started speaking in tongues. And then the one and then the one next to him started speaking in tongues. And then everybody else started speaking in tongues. And then there was revival. People started to be healed. There was miracles that started to happen. People outside were saying, what's going on here? What's happening? Why are these people speaking in other languages? Why are there people being healed? People who are blind, people who are blind would go into the house where they were at, and they would come out seen. Soon after, the congregation moved to the place that is called Azusa Street. They rented a house on that street, Azusa Street. And there they would have services night and day. And they, led, and they had the Holy Spirit lead the church. The Holy Spirit was led by the church. I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit led the church. It was not the pastor. It wasn't William Seymour. It wasn't the leaders of the church. But the Holy Spirit, God himself, was the leader of the congregation. And they would all speak in tongues. The Los Angeles Times actually wrote in 1906. The Los Angeles Times actually wrote and he, they said, 
They are speaking in different languages. They are acting like unknown people. But supernatural things are happening. And people are being healed. People are being transformed. People who are who were in drugs are no longer in drugs. People who, can, who are blind can now see. And we have different cultures. We have different races that are congregating together. And in those days, that was something that was out of the ordinary. It was something that was that wouldn't happen. But it was so normal because the presence of God was there on Azusa Street. That great revival, that great revival offspring many of the churches that we have today. Many of the people that came here to the Imperial Valley come from that revival. That's when the Assemblies of God was formed. That's when many Pentecostal churches were formed. And that revival that happened, as it is written in Joel 28, 19, which says, in those last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, is beginning to happen. And it will happen. Como está escrito en el libro de Juan 28, y derramaré mi espíritu sobre toda carne. Ese avivamiento va a suceder. Como ese avivamiento que pasó en Azusa Street, también va a pasar hoy. Va a suceder, pero tú tienes que estar listo. Tú tienes que estar preparado. Porque viene ese avivamiento. The revival is coming. And you will be transformed by the Spirit of God. But you must believe. And you must have a relationship with God. And let's begin. What is a revival? ¿Qué es avivamiento? When you were saved, you received the word of God. You heard somebody tell you, Jesus loves you. And the Holy Spirit convicted you of sin. You accepted Christ. And you said, Lord, come into my life. And be the savior of my life. And you were transformed. And you couldn't stop preaching about God. You couldn't, you couldn't stop telling everybody about Jesus. And you would come to church all the time. Right? Cuando fuiste salvo, querías predicar de Jesús en todas partes. Le querías decir a todo el mundo que Dios te había salvado. Venías a la iglesia, leías tu Biblia. Ese es tu primer amor. That is called your first love. Your first love. When you are barely saved, it's called your first love. That is revival. A revival happens, and you are enlightened and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, your whole spiritual self wakes up. A revival is hunger for God. Un avivamiento es hambre de Dios. You hunger for God. You hunger for it, for His glory. You hunger for His presence. And that is what makes the difference in your life. In these past years, in these past years, COVID came, right? We had a pandemic. And many of the people in church left church. Mucha gente de la iglesia se fue por COVID. And the revival that we once had was gone. People started to leave church. La gente se fue de la iglesia. The church fell asleep. The miracles, signs, and wonders have ceased. Not completely, but they have. The churches that we once had no longer are in that power of the Spirit of God. It has, gone, it, it has caused great sleepness to the church. But that's what the enemy has done. The enemy has brought deceit. The enemy has brought fear into our lives. But God knows these things. And He knows that a revival is coming. He is ready to wake up His church. And you must be prepared. You must be prepared for this revival. Because in this revival, in this intimate relationship with God that you are about to experience, you have to be prepared. 
you have to look for God. Yes. Because look at Moses. Let's look at Moses. Moses was called by God. Moses was called by God to be a friend. Dios le habló Moisés para ser amigo. He was led by God. You see that Moses says, he says, you have been telling me, lead this people, but you have not let me know who you, who you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and have found favor with you. Who talks to God that way? Do you speak to God that way? When you pray, what do you do? Usually we just pray and we say, Lord, we praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. I need this and I need that. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. But this is not what Moses is doing. This is not what Moses is doing. Moses is in an intimate relationship with God and he's, he's questioning God. He's saying, Lord, who will, who will you send with me, Lord? Moses tells God, if your presence will not go with me, who will you send with me, Lord? ¿Quién va a ir conmigo, Señor? Si tu presencia no va conmigo, yo no voy a ningún lugar. If your presence does not go with me, I will go nowhere. And that's the way you should be. You should be looking for God in such an intimate way that you say, I will not move if you do not move me. You should be asking God, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Show me your glory, Lord. Because if your presence does not go with me, I will not go. Tell God. Close your eyes for now. And tell the Lord, and tell the Lord you have said that you have found favor. You have said that you have found favor with me. So if you have found favor with me, tell me, Lord, will you go with me? Will you reveal yourself to me? Will you fill me with your presence, O oh Lord? Tell the Lord to fill you, to reveal himself to you. Tell him to, so tell the Lord, dile, Dios, haz esto real para mi vida. Enséñame que en verdad tú eres Dios. Enséñame que en verdad tú quieres una relación conmigo. Yo tengo dudas, Señor. I have doubt, Lord. Reveal yourself to me, Father. Dare to speak to God in faith. Dare to, to speak to the Lord in faith and with power. Lord. And He will reveal Himself to you. He will speak to you. He will fill you with His presence. Hallelujah. Moses was called by God, but so are you. You are also called by God. There is no difference between you and Moses. There is no difference between you and Peter. There is no difference between the apostles and you. You have access to everything that God, has, that God is willing to provide for you. Tú tienes acceso para todo lo que Dios te quiere proveer. No hay ninguna diferencia entre Moisés y tú. El Espíritu Santo está ahí para ti. The Holy Spirit is there with you, with you now. And it's up to you. It's up to you to say, Lord, I accept my calling. I accept what you're calling me to do, Lord. Because God has something for you. Dios tiene algo especial para ti, pero tienes que creerlo. Así como Dios le habló a Moisés y te dice, hey, ven, y quítate las sandalias porque no estás parado en tierra santa. Just like God told Moses, come and take off your sandals for where you stand is holy ground. Right now, where you stand, this is holy ground. The presence of God is here. Dare to speak to God. God has a calling on you. Pastor, evangelist, teacher, or father, or mother, but God has a ministry for you. God has a purpose for you. Tell your neighbor, you have a purpose.
You have a purpose. You have a purpose. You're still here and you have a purpose. And God will use you in a powerful way. Dios te va a usar de una manera poderosa. Porque tienes un propósito de Dios. You have a purpose from God. You are called by God. You are special. Hallelujah. And you must share what you have. You must share what you have with everybody else on this earth so that people may be saved. And now, let's talk about Moses. Who was Moses? Who was Moses? In those days, the Israelites or the Hebrews were being enslaved by the Egyptians. So it so happened, it so happened that there was a great famine in those days. And God used Joseph, one of the 12 sons of Jacob or Israel. And he used Joseph to be a great governor, you could say, in Egypt. So Joseph, God, God gave Joseph wisdom. And they survived the, they, they survived the, the famine. So the Israelites, or the Hebrews, came to Egypt. Now, 400 years passed. 400 years passed. Okay? And the Pharaoh that was alive during the time of Joseph now had passed on. And the new Pharaoh had said, these Hebrews are becoming too powerful. They're multiplying too fast. So we have to do something about this. Because if we, if we don't, they're going to take over Egypt. So then, then Moses is born. And the Pharaoh sends all first male born son to be killed. But here is Moses. He gets put in a, he gets put in a basket. And he's sent out into the house of Pharaoh. So Moses to a river arrives to the house of Pharaoh. And Moses grows up and becomes a prince of Egypt. And he learns the wisdom of Egypt and becomes a very smart man. But you know, Moses back then did not have the Spirit of God. Moisés no tenía el poder de Dios. Moisés no conocía a Dios. So era un hombre con temor. He was a man with fear. He was a man just like Peter. He was a man who was like us before our salvation. So Moses sees a Hebrew being beaten by an Egyptian. And Moses gets angry. He gets angry. Have you ever felt that? When you see those that are not saved and you want to talk to that person and say, hey, Jesus loves you. And you have that, you, you feel that fire in, in, in your chest, in your stomach. And you just want to preach that word of God and say, hey, God loves you. Well, Moses felt that fire for his, his fellow Israelites. So he kills, the, he kills the Egyptian. But when he kills the Egyptian, guilt comes upon his life. Now Moses instead of facing instead of facing Pharaoh and his justice he runs away Moses runs away instead of facing the consequence en vez de que Moisés se enfrentará al faraón le corre, se va y dice no, aquí no me quedo yo me voy a correr because if, if it was modern days if it was today then Moses would be considered a fugitive right he would be considered a fugitive, a man running from the law. So he goes into the land of Midian and he meets his father-in-law, Jethro. And then he meets his wife and he gets married. And God blesses him. Dios lo bendice. Dios lo bendice grandemente. And Moses becomes a farmer, a shepherd. And he's really happy. But you know what happened to Moses is this. Lo que le pasa a Moisés es esto. Moses is out there thinking, my life is great. My life is complete. But then God calls Moses. 
Dios le habla a Moisés. And God tells Moses, come here, Moses. Come here. And he invites him up into the mountain and up into Sinai. So there goes Moses. And God says, God tells Moses, I have heard my people's cry. I have heard the cry of my people. And now I am sending you to Egypt so that you may confront the Pharaoh and say, hey, let my people go and tell the Pharaoh that I will send miracles, signs, and wonders. But then there Moses, he says, but who am I, Lord? I can't go. I can't go. What am I going to do, Lord? I am slow of speech. I can't speak. But God responds and says, am I am not the Lord who has made man's mouth? I will send your brother Aaron. Now go and confront the Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Imagine. Imagine if Moses would have said no. Imagine if Moses would have said, I'm not going. Think about it. Now Moses goes to Pharaoh and God brings the plagues. He brings the plagues upon Egypt. And finally, the Pharaoh lets go of the people. But it's because Moses believed. Number one, Moses had a relationship with God. Number two, the more Moses would speak to God, the more Moses wanted from God. Hallelujah. The more Moses spoke to God, the more he wanted to from the more he wanted from God, and the more he wanted to know God. Think about it. He was filled with the presence of God. He was filled with his power. For what did Moses do? He would raise his staff and there was victory. Levantaba la vara y había victoria. Because the Spirit of God was upon Moses. El Espíritu de Dios estaba sobre Moisés. And the Spirit of God is upon you. For you are no, no different. For you say, I know that you say because I've said it. I can't go for I'm slow of speech or I have this difficulty. I can't do this. I have doubt, Lord, but you're calling me. How do we deal with these things? A relationship with God. If you speak to God and you tell God, Lord, I'm slow of speech. I can't do this or I can't do that. Well, God, the Bible says, there's a verse in the Bible that says, when I am weak, when I am weak, you are strong. When you can't, he can. Because it is for his glory. It is for the glory of God. Everything that you do is for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It is for the glory of God. It is not for you to be exalted, but for him who is on his throne. For him who is resurrected. For him who gave his life to be exalted. It is Jesus Christ who is exalted. And we are privileged. We are privileged to exalt his name. We were created for him and by him to be in intimate relation. Nosotros fuimos creados para exaltar el nombre de Dios. Tenemos el privilegio, el privilegio de decir gloria a Dios, toda la gloria sea a Jesucristo. Amén. Ese es el Dios que servimos. That is the God that we serve. God was a friend of Moses. And God is your friend. John 15, 15 says, Turn to John 15, 15. John 15, 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Now listen to this. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit 
that will last. And so that, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. That you love one another as I have loved you. But listen to the verse. Listen to the very words of Christ. Listen to what he says. But I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Él te ha escogido a ti. Tú no lo escogiste a él. Él te escogió a ti. He chose you for his glory. Isn't that amazing? Look to your neighbor and tell God chose you. God chose you. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve. And Moses said, show me your glory, Lord. Enseñame tu gloria, Dios. Again, who talks to God that way? Will you speak to God? Will you now, when you pray, will you say, Lord, I am here, Father. Tell me, Lord. Tell, speak to me, Father. When you pray, you can't remain silent. Te puedes quedar callado con horas y escuchar la voz de Dios. You can quiet your when you pray, you can be quiet and just listen to the word of God. Let him speak. Let him speak for once. Let him speak to your heart. Because when you say, when you have doubt and you say, I can't hear the voice of God, that's because you're being too loud. Then maybe it's time for you to listen to God's voice. Listen to him speak because he wishes to speak to you. God wishes to speak to your heart. God wishes to instruct you. God wishes to have that intimate relationship with you as he did with Moses. Thank you, Father. But why do we turn away from God? Why do we turn away from God? You know, God, God healed you from COVID, right? Because I'm pretty sure we've all had it. We've all had that problem. We've all had that disease. Why do we turn away from God? Why are we like the people of Israel? This is what happened to the people of Israel. Es lo que le pasó al pueblo de Israel. The people of Israel were blessed by God. They were blessed by God. They were free by God. And Moses came and provided freedom through God. And when they were in the wilderness, when they were walking, they started murmuring. They started complaining against God. Maybe God should have left us back in Egypt where we had meat. Because now all you're giving me is manna. All you're giving me is food from heaven. Wait, what? All you're giving me is food from heaven. But no, Lord, I want more. I want more. You should have just left me back there, Lord. Mejor me has dejado ahí, Señor. Porque lo más me lo que me das es comida del cielo. Why do we complain? Why do we turn away from God and do our own thing? Why are we like that? Paul said, what a wretched man I am. Because Paul said, everything that I want to do, I don't do. But everything that I, that, that I do want to do, or that I don't want to do, that's what I do. What a wretched man I am. So, God would lift up judges in Israel. God would raise judges in Israel, and they would fight for Israel. They would be free, they would be blessed, and then Israel would turn back. And that's how we are sometimes. But I can't hear the voice of God. Then because that's because you're turning away from Him. Don't put Him aside. Listen to Him. Let's be faithful. Let's all be faithful to him. And how are we going to do this? ¿Cómo lo vamos a hacer? How are we going to do this? By having an intimate relationship with God. For he has not given up on you. Because it seems like God is speaking to you week by week. Because then last week he tell you, 
Did he last week he tell you, my prodigal son returned to me, returned to me. And now we have returned. And now he says, relationship, my son, relationship, speak to me. God is there with his arms wide open. Dios está ahí con los brazos abiertos, esperando para que tú vengas. God is waiting for you to come to him with, with arms wide open. We need relationship. Let's no longer turn away from God, but embrace him. Don't run away from his presence, but run to his presence. Correr a su presencia. Look for his presence. Be filled with his presence. In his presence, there is healing. In his presence, there is joy. In his presence, there is power. In his presence, there is the fullness of the Spirit. In his presence, there is no depression. In his presence, there is no anxiety. In his presence, there is no death. In his presence, there is no death. There is no demon. Before his presence, the demons run. Before his presence, death runs. Because God is everlasting life. Because God is everlasting joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. Lord of God. Thank you, Father. God is everlasting life. And his presence there is healing. And maybe today you are depressed. Maybe today you are hurting. Maybe today you need healing. Maybe today you need the presence of God. Do you? Raise your hand if you are sick. Raise your hand. Today, God will heal you. Are you ready for miracles, signs, and wonders? Are you ready? Do you believe that God can heal you? ¿Tú crees que Dios te puede sanar? If you believe, the Master will come now before you and He will heal you. The sermon isn't over. So hold on. Let me have the elders of the church. The elders of the church, come here. says in the book of James he says that if, if anyone here in the congregation is sick to lay their hands on them for the whole elders of the church to lay their hands on them and they will be healed today in Jesus name you will see the miracle if you believe if you believe you will see the miracle God will bring healing because there is healing in the presence of God there is healing. God heals. And so that all may see, so that the whole world may see that He is God. That He is alive. That Jesus is alive. This will happen. All we have to do is pray for them. Let's pray for the sick. Put your hands on them. Put your hands on them. Pray. Hallelujah. Now just pray. In Jesus' name. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. The Lord your God is here with you. The Lord your God, the Holy Spirit is here. And in the name of Jesus, we declare healing so that the world may see that you are God. Lord, we declare, Father, so that the world may see that you are almighty, that you are all-powerful, Lord. That they do not doubt that you are the king of the universe. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, believe it. Believe. Do you believe that he can heal you? Do you believe it? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Who else is sick? Who else needs prayer? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. Today, do you believe Jesus can heal you? Do you believe that he can heal you? Your eyes, your eyes will get better. Just believe. Because through his wounds, we are healed. Through his wounds, we are healed. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, receive your healing for the glory of God, so that his name may be lifted up, so that his name may be glorified in Jesus' name. Lord, heal, Father, heal. Somos sanados. 
por las llagas de Cristo recibe tu sanidad en el nombre de Jesús, aquí está aquí está, recibe, recibe y dice el Señor tu fe, por tu fe eres sano en el nombre de Jesús, solamente recibe y dale gracias a Dios en el nombre de Jesús Jesus, all you have to do is pour 
want your spirit and he will become your friend. Believe. Believe and receive and give thanks. Hallelujah. Believe. And let's go, people. If you're going to applaud, applaud the master with all your strength. Hallelujah. God is going to go. And don't go to Jesus. Come on, you scholar. We worship you, scholar. Whatever may be your relationship with God now, God is calling you into an intimate relationship with Him. In the more intimate and powerful relationship as you ever had experienced before. Dios te está dando hoy. Dios te está dando hoy. Para una relación más íntima. Dios. Dios te está hablando hoy para una relación más íntima para que te inclines y le digas aquí estoy Dios aquí estoy y vas a ver esa duda que tienes en tu corazón esa duda que tienes en tu corazón se va en el nombre de Jesús se va cree, recibe porque el reino de Dios su justicia está aquí aleluya thank you Father thank you Lord the name of Jesus. The world, the world needs a church that is revived. The world needs a church that is filled with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The, the, the world needs a church that is filled with power. Not a church that is dry, but a church that is filled with the power of the Spirit. Now, you must go now and say, you must go now and say, Lord, show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory. For if you do not go with me, I will not go, Lord. But if you say that your favor is upon me and that I am your friend, then Lord, walk with me. And now God tells you, my presence will go before you. My presence will go before you because I have called you friend so that you may know my favor, my presence will be upon you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. He has called you to relationship and it's time to awake from your sleep. It's time to desire God. It's time to desire His relationship. It's time to make a difference. It's time to say to the city, to the county, to the world, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. Jesus vive. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now by your works, by your faith, transform the world. Transform the world with the power of the Spirit. Not just be saved. Not just Yes, be saved, but not just, hey, Jesus loves you, but not be transformed, transformation. Be filled with his presence. Be filled with the power of God. Be transformed, and you will see it. Believe it. You will see the miracles, signs, and wonders. I invite you now to the altar. I invite you to the altar, and now tell Jesus, Lord, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Tell the Lord, forgive me of my sins. Perdóname mis pecados. Forgive me of all my sins, Lord. Come now. Come to the altar and worship God. Worship God. Worship Him. For it's time to change the world. It's time to conform. It's time to be filled with the Spirit of God. For you are His children. You are the mighty priesthood of God. Tú eres un gran sacerdocio lleno del poder del Espíritu Santo. Y hay libertad ante su presencia. Hay libertad upon his presence. There is freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive his presence. Receive his power. Receive his glory. And 
Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The presence of God is here. In the name of Jesus. Receive the power of the Spirit of God. Let it rain. Let the Holy Spirit minister you. Let the Holy Spirit minister you. Receive the presence of Jesus. Receive the presence of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. The Lord loves you. The Lord cares for you. Holy Spirit is with you. Amen.